Okay, um, good afternoon to all of you. This is the video for the first unit that is medical terminology, okay? Um, and it is related with prefixes, roots, and suffixes. So that's what we are going to be talking about. As you can see here, here we have the word pericarditis. Um, and there is a simple way to see words like this. Okay, most of words like this are just a combination of elements. Okay, elements called prefixes, roots, and suffixes. So today we are going to see in depth these three elements. Hoy día vamos a hablar un poquito más acerca de estos tres elementos que se combinan y forman palabras como esta. Um, okay, so. We're going to start with the first element that goes at the beginning, right? That is the prefix. And there are three things that we need to know about prefixes. The first one is that they go before the root word, okay? Or in other words, they go at the beginning of the word. Entonces van antes de la raíz o en otras palabras van al principio de la palabra. Number two. You also have to know that they describe location and intensity. Okay, they general, generally describe that. Uh, usualmente describen lugar e intensidad. And number three, not all medical terms have prefixes. So most of them have, but not all of them. Um, just something that you need to know is that we are talking in general terms. Okay, estamos hablando en términos generales because, as you know, in English there are a lot of exceptions. En inglés siempre hay excepciones, pero vamos a hablar en, en general acerca de esto. Okay, okay so um, to be easier for you, we have a way to classify prefixes, ok, hay una manera de clasificar los prefijos um, just to make it easy for you, solo para hacérselos un poquito más fácil, we can say that they can classify into size, for example, into rates, colors, place, and problems. Uh, size is related with tamaño, right, and we can have here like macro, that means large, como grande, right? M micro, that means small, pequeño. Megalo, that means enlarge. Algo que se agranda, right? Then we have rates, for example, medidas, right? For example, hyper, como algo que es alto. Then we have hypo, algo que es bajo. Then we have tacky, something that is fast, algo que es rápido. We have ready, something that is slow, algo que es lento. Um, for example, tachycardia, right? Bradycardia. And then we have colors. Some prefixes are related with colors, um, like chloro, that is related with color green, ¿no es cierto? Se relaciona con el color verde. Luke, related with white, con el blanco. Irith, related with red. Then we have cyan, related with blue, and so on, because we have more of them. Here are just some examples. And we also have prefixes related with place. Relacionados están algunos prefijos con lugares, right? Uh, like here, for example, we have endo and intra, that is uh, like inside of something, que está como eh, dentro de, right? Endo or intra, los dos significan dentro de. Then we have extra, that is outside, totally the opposite, right? Extra, afuera, totalmente opuesto a esto. Then we have uh, inter, that means between, ¿no es cierto? En medio de inter. Then we have peri, that means around, alrededor, peri. We have trans, that means across, como a través de, right? That is trans. And we have some prefixes related with problems, for example, this, and we also have ma. So this means that it, something is not working properly. Dale idea, no es cierto, o significa que algo no está trabajando apropiadamente. And we also have mal, that means bad, right? Como algo que está malo, Let, let's say that, okay? Um, so that's about prefixes, and something else that you need to know is that prefixes precede a hyphen. This is a hyphen, un guión, right? So all prefixes go before the hyphen. Los prefijos van antes de este guión, like hypo, hyper, megalo, chloro, and all of the prefixes that 
we have just mentioned. And here we have the next part of this word that is the root, right? In this example, the root is card. And we're going to be talking something else about this. So you have to know also three things about roots. The first one is that they can con convey um, the essential meaning of the word, okay? So they are the essence of the word. Ellos, estas raíces, son la esencia de la palabra. Usually, they describe a body part, a tissue, or an organ. Usualmente, describen una parte del cuerpo, un tejido, o un órgano. And all medical terms have a root. Okay, todos los términos médicos tienen una raíz. Um, I remember, we're talking in general terms, okay? Estamos hablando en términos generales, so... Maybe there are some exceptions that we are going to see in class. Okay, so the same as prefixes, we can classify them. Um, for us, uh, so it, it is easier to learn them. So we have roots related with body parts, for example, cephalo, right? Like uh, related with head, que está relacionado con la cabeza. Then we also have uh, Roots related with tissues, like dermo. Entonces, algunos, no es cierto, raíces están relacionadas con eh, algunos tejidos, like dermo related with skin. And then we have some uh, roots related with organs, algunas raíces relacionadas con órganos, like cardio, relacionada al corazón, right, to the heart. And... Well, you have to know that there are some rules to combine roots. Hay algunas reglas para combinar estas raíces. Um, so when we want to combine roots, we usually, well, most of the time, we use something that is called a combining vowel. Usualmente ocupamos algo que se llama una vocal combinada. Okay? Y esa vocal, al unirse con nuestra raíz, hace la forma combinada, or the combined form of the root. What is the combining vowel? Primero vemos qué es. It is a vowel, usually an I, E, or O. Usualmente es una I, E, o, O. That helps us join together one root to another root or suffix. Que nos ayuda entonces a unir nuestra, uh, por ejemplo aquí, nuestra raíz con eh, esta vocal nos ayuda a unirla con un sufijo o con otra raíz, like here, right? Uh, it has no meaning. It is only for pronunciation purposes, okay? So this O... Uh, o, O, right, bueno, acá tenemos puras O, pero no tienen ningún significado. Solamente es para un, un sentido de pronunciación eh, de la palabra, ¿ok? And we have three rules that we need to keep in mind. The first one says drop the combining vowel when the suffix starts with a vowel. So here is rule number one, and what you need to do is the following. Here we have the root, aquí está nuestra raíz, gaster, right, hasta la R. Y tenemos nuestra vocal combinada. Entonces, esto completo es la forma combinada de la raíz. ¿Ok? And I want to join it together with our suffix. Quiero unirlo a un sufijo. But this suffix, let's see this, starts with a vowel, right? Este sufijo empieza con una vocal. Y aquí tenemos la vocal, la I. Entonces, ¿qué pasa aquí? Yo no necesito esta vocal combinada, entonces la puedo sacar porque aquí ya tengo una vocal. ¿Ok? En este sufijo ya tengo una vocal, no la necesito. Entonces, digo gastritis, and I don't need the O. ¿Ok? Then I have rule number two, and in this case it says, we keep the combining vowel when the suffix starts with a consonant. Entonces, nuevamente, cuando la uno con un sufijo, pero en este caso mi sufijo comienza con una consonante como la G, ahí sí necesito mantener mi vocal combinada. ¿Ok? En mi forma combinada. Entonces, aquí voy a decir angiography, right? So I need the combining vowel. Y la dejo. And then I have rule number three. You always use the combining vowel between two roots, uh, whether the next one starts with a vowel or with a consonant. Entonces, siempre dejamos esta forma combinada, dejamos esta vocal aquí, cuando uno, una raíz, a otra raíz, ¿ok? Independiente si la siguiente raíz comienza con una consonante o si comienza con una vocal. Siempre que hay dos raíces juntas, la primera raíz mantiene su vocal combinada. For example, here I have gas, vamos a ver este, gastro, right? And this root starts with a vowel. Comienza con una vocal esta raíz. Y por lo que estábamos hablando recién, como en la 
regla 1, ¿no es cierto? Yo podría sacarla, pero como es una raíz y no es un sufijo, la dejo. Entonces sería gastroenterology, right? There you go. And what about this one? So it says electrocardiogram. And in this case, the next root, la siguiente raíz, ¿no es cierto? Que está justo aquí a la que voy a unir a esta primera raíz, comienza con una consonante, so I need to uh, keep the combining vowel too. Okay, so in both cases, a lot of the time when we have two roots together, I need to keep the combining vowel. That's it. So I can have electrocardiogram or gastroenterology, right? And um, that's most of it. And okay. So something else that you need to know is that roots have a slash. Okay, this is a slash. Tenem, todas las raíces tienen un slash. Where the connecting vowel attaches to it. Okay, donde se va a unir nuestra vocal combinada. So this is the combining form. Esta es la forma para poder combinarla. But the root actually is cardi. Okay, and this is the combining vowel, cardio. And finally, we have the end of this word. Pericarditis, where we're going to focus in ITs, right? And this is what we call the suffix. And you need to also know three things about suffixes. The first thing is that suffixes, sorry, go at the end of the word. Okay, so van al final. They describe usually a procedure, a condition, a disease, or a part of a speech. Usualmente describen una, un procedimiento, condición, enfermedad, o parte del lenguaje. And all medical terms have a suffix, okay? Todos los términos médicos tienen un sufijo. And that's like a rule. All of them have a suffix, okay? Todos, todos tienen un sufijo. And we also can classify them into categories, so it is easier for us to remember them. Así es más fácil recordarlos, right? Los podemos clasificar en categorías. The first one is surgery. So, here we have it. Sufijos relacionados a cirugía, for example, Ectomy, that means removal, remover, right? Plasty, that means repair, reparar. Lysis, that means separate something, separar algo. We also have some related with diseases. So we have, for example, itis, inflammation, inflammation, ahia, um, um, related with a pain, right? Relacionado a dolor. Then we have oma, related with tumors, tumores. Pinia, related with abnormal reduction, que se relaciona con una reducción anormal de algo. And we also have parts of the speech. So, uh, tenemos algunos sufijos que nos dicen que eh, esto es, es como la palabra que vamos a obtener va a ser un adjetivo o va a ser un sustantivo. Ok. Ac, al, ari, os, ik, tic, and il are adjectives, son para formar adjetivos. Y todos estos que están aquí en azul significan pertaining to, perteneciente a. Ok? And then we have e and us that are to make nouns, que son para hacer sustantivos. And we also have the category of diagnostic procedures, entonces procedimientos de diagnóstico, right? Scope, palabras que terminan en scope, that are related with uh, in this instrument for evaluation, for examination. And we also have scopy, right? Like the process of examination, uh, relacionado a diagnósticos, a realizar diagnósticos. And then we have like other common suffixes. We uh, keep that here because they are uh, like known for most of the people. For example, we have a logy, that is the study of, el estudio de, right? Uh, biology, psychology, and so on. We also have phobia related with the fear of, el, el, Ah, I forgot it. Como estar asustado de, ¿no es cierto? Um, arachnophobia, asustado a las arañas. Then we have philia, like love for or love of, como el amor hacia, right? And so all suffixes, uh, very similar to prefixes, uh, they uh, need to go together with a hyphen, right? Usualmente como los prefijos van junto a un guión. But in this case, they follow the hyphen. Ellos siguen al guión. So they go after the hyphen. Entonces van después de este guión. Uh, a diferencia de los prefijos que van antes del guión, right? And finally, uh, you need to know this. So to read some medical terminology, we need to keep in mind that we need to start with the end of the word. Siempre comenzamos a leerlo desde el final. So we start reading here. Itis, right? 
suffix inflammation. Entonces comenzamos con el final que sería inflamación. Then we go back to the beginning of the term. Y después nos vamos al principio. Y en el principio puede haber un prefijo o puede haber solamente una raíz. ¿Ok? En este caso hay un prefijo. Entonces yo me voy acá y leo ok. Este es el principio. Y me dice around, peri. Entonces inflamación alrededor de inflammation around. Y luego continúo, ¿no es cierto? Entonces atrás, adelante y sigo la palabra eh, con lo que quede. Entonces tenemos card en este caso, that means heart. So this word means inflammation around the heart, right? Inflamación alrededor del corazón. And that's it. So as you can see, it's not that hard reading this type of words. You just only need to uh, study a lot the lists of um, prefixes, roots, and suffixes. And maybe you can classify them into categories so it is easier to remember. And you just uh, need to be careful with the combining vowels, right? Cuidado ahí con las eh, vocales para combinar, que no significan nada, pero eh, si tienen que armar una palabra hay que tener cuidado. Por ejemplo, aquí no la necesitamos, ¿no es cierto? Porque el siguiente sufijo comienza con una vocal, así que podemos sacar el EO. So it becomes into cardiitis. Um, ok. And remember that prefixes always go at the beginning. Los prefijos siempre van al principio, antes de la raíz. And suffixes always go at the end. Y los sufijos siempre van al final. So, it's time for you to practice. And I want you to work on pages 3 to 13 of your booklet. And in case that you have any questions, you can uh, write them and ask them during the Zoom class. Okay, podemos responderlas en la clase en Zoom. That's why classes are for. Um, So you have time to work on this. Uh, tienen tiempo para trabajar en estas páginas. Tienen aproximadamente dos a tres semanas para poder realizarlas todas. Así que esto es más que nada para que puedan practicar lo que vayamos viendo en clases. ¿okay? Y también para que puedan hacerlo en sus tiempos de eh, clase a, asincrónica. Ok, so that's all for now. And any questions, as I said, uh, just ask them in class. Okay?